They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet. Gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Housewarmings, the outdoor living and fireplace experts. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We are outdoors today with Alan and Jay, the bee dudes, they're back. We're gonna talk a little bit about what happened. This was a rough winter on some yeah, bees. Yeah, it was a rough winter. I have been given kind of a little bit of hope here. Y'all said it looks pretty good over there. I got a bunch of bees. Looking really good. That's a good thing, but we've got many, many emails where folks have wanted to talk about bees. Well, guess what? We're gonna talk about it today. Our whole show is dedicated to bees. It's not as hard as you think. Right here in Frankfurt, there's a place that's got one of the biggest warehouses around yep, yep. where you can buy tons of bee stuff. Yep. What's the name of it? Dedant. And we'll talk about Dedant's in just a little while. But first of all, let's talk about the fact that just met you guys last year. Excited about bees. Obviously excited about honey. But you got to start somewhere. Alan Martin. Hey, We're now. almost neighbors. Almost. Not too now, far away from each other. We got to talking on Facebook. I set up more shoots off of Facebook from folks who were interested in anything that has to do with the old-fashioned ways or anything that has to do with nature so on and so forth right. and bringing food to the table in some shape form or fashion now today we're going to talk about bees as i came in i saw you had all kinds of beehives out here and i've mm -hmm. talked to you you're a bee guy yeah i'm going to ask you some very topical questions because a lot of people are asking me how do you start a beehive and i'm like i don't know let's ask alan all right <laughs> so today i'm going to ask you how in the world would you get started in the bee business? I mean, it just say you wanted to do it for your own production, just to have right. enough honey for your family. Well, first thing you need to get is you can get a starter kit. You can actually buy starter kits, or you know, you can put a hive together yourself. Where do you get something? Where do you get a starter kit? Well, the easiest thing I did was just get online, look right. up bee supplies. Uh, there's some local bee supply houses you can go to and buy them. Uh, there's all types of supply houses online you can order from, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of times you get to asking around, you'll find someone that's got bees, and they'll be willing to give you a hive, you know, just yeah. a lot of times. So what does a hive consist of, or a starter kit? Well, this here is a brood box. Okay. All right, and the, being brood, that's what uh, the, the young ones are raised in. The queen will stay down there, and that's what she'll lay. What you'll do is put foundation wax in it. Gotcha. So that's, this is actual wax? That's, that's actual bees wax that okay. uh, uh, people will harvest. They'll send it off, and they make these uh, foundations out of them. All right, now, obviously, you got your starter box, you got your frames, but where are you gonna get the bees? Well, I personally like to try to catch a wild swarm. Get a phone call, someone says, you know, I got bees in my backyard, on my house, garage, Does that tree. happen, is that pretty common? Pretty common in the spring. Right now, you know, it, it's, it's slowed off now, but in the spring, uh, it happens quite a bit. There for a while, uh, a friend of mine and myself, we were going about every other day getting a swarm of bees somewhere. That in itself sounds pretty crazy to a lot of people. Bees sting. And it's a very unpleasant sensation. When you yeah, get, yeah. I, mean, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're full of bees, you're, you're going you to get stung. You're going to get stung. There's no way out. Now, there. when they swarm, explain, if you will, for those who have absolutely no idea what a swarm is, 
What is a swarm? Uh, well, what will happen is uh, when they get so many bees, they'll produce a new queen. They'll form a queen cell. Uh, it's a special cell that they put in there and they feed it what they call royal jelly. It's a special type of honey blend that will form a queen. The new queen will hatch out. She will uh, uh, fly out. Well, what's, what's, the new, what's the old queen thing well, about that, the That's what we're getting ready to get okay, to. Okay, all right. Yeah, the, the new queen will fly out, find a mate, mate, come back. When the new queen comes back, she boots the old queen out. Really? How does she do yeah, that? Well, it's just, just natural instinct. I mean, does she, she physically out. attack that or do do the other ones? Or uh, it, She just knows when it comes back that it's, it's time for me to leave. Time you know? to go. Time to go. So uh, she'll leave and can take up to half the bees with her. They'll come out and swarm around, land in a tree somewhere, ball up, and uh, got scouts running around looking for a hole in a house or something like that to start a new hive. And once one finds a place to start a hive, it'll come back and say, come on, guys, let's go. And then I'll just... Now, off, yeah. they communicate in a very unusual manner. Do they do their little dance? They do a little the dance, house? yeah, do a little dance, shaking their tail, you know, flapping the wings. And somehow or another, they can, he does, he turns around and does yeah, this or that. The direction of the sun, they use the sun and stuff like that. And they they know where to go, which yeah. to, to us, it just boggles the mind. Yeah, he can actually know. take, if I had a hive set right here and moved it 30 feet over there, the bees that are out are going to come back to this spot looking for the hive because they've located the hive with this tree, that fence they will not go back to that box. Wow. So when you, if you move a hive, you need to move it at least two, two and a half miles away in order for them to come back to the box. Son of a gun. So the old queen is out. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a place to go. Right. That's they where I get my phone call. That's where I get my you phone call. You get your phone call. At that point, what do you do? Uh, well, if they're on a limb, typically I'll, I'll take a box with me. We'll go up there. I've got a friend of mine goes. We'll either cut the limb, just lay the limb in the box, or you can actually grab it and just give it a shake and it'll all fall right off in the box. Queen included. Queen included. Now, at this point, I'm suppose you got some kind of protective gear on. Uh, typically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> typically? typically? Typically, I mean, actually when they're swarming, they're not, they're not really aggressive. They have nothing to protect. There's no food there, there's nothing like that. I mean, you can actually, if you wanted to, theoretically, you could go over and just grab the bees and move them with bare hands. I don't like getting stung, I don't want to take that chance, so typically I don't do that. <laughs> I mean, all right, that's all fascinating yeah. me, but I would prefer that you do that. Yeah, yeah. Typically, I got the gloves and the, and the jacket on. Now you've got a shop back here hooked up to mm -hmm. some kind of device. What is that exactly? That's what we use if uh, someone calls and they've got a swarm that's in the uh, wall of their house or garage or something like that. We'll go in there and pull it out. And uh, what this does is actually, when we start it up, it creates a vacuum in this box. Mm -hmm. Inside this box, we have. Another little box. Well. So what we'll do, we'll pull the bees into here. This box has a vent on it, so it doesn't pull real hard. It just barely pulls the bees in, so we don't hardly lose any bees, you know, being damaged coming through the hose. Right. Once it gets full, we'll close it up, pull it out. There's our bees. And there's your bees. You take bees. them back and put them take in Take them back and put them right in the hive. Obviously, you're not doing this just because you like to watch bees. You like the yeah. end product, which is honey. Which is the honey. Which is terribly good for you and it doesn't spoil. Right, it'll They're, keep forever. I mean, the worst the worst honey will do is it can turn to sugar, which yeah. a little hot water bath, you're back it's to, done. You're back, back you're good to go. Now, tell us, if you will, how these bees make honey and why. They make honey to pr produce food for them through the winter. What they'll do is they'll go out and collect pollen, nectar from the, the plants and uh, basically bring it back. And once they've got a, a frame drawn out, uh, they'll just basically, it's it's bee spit, if you want to look, look at it that way. I mean, they, they'll take it in and then they uh, put it back into the to the frame and that's their food for the winter. It's, it's food for that's them. that's how they survive. Now, obviously, they're bringing all this stuff back and they're making food for themselves and later food for you. Right. But at some point in time, you have to come out and collect this and how does that work? Uh, we'll have a super, what they call a super set on top of this, which is a little, a, a little shorter. What we'll do is come in, take a smoker, push the bees down because the, the, the smoke will calm the bees and they'll move away from it. Put smoke in the top of the box, it'll push them down a little bit, basically pull it off, and put the lid back on, and we've got, you know, up to, you can get up to 10, 10 pounds of honey per frame. You're kidding me. Now what's he doing right now, Alan? Explain. He's uh, pulling some frames out of that super he's got on top, that little small box you can see on top there, mm -hmm. uh, checking to see how much they've got the frames drawn out and how much honey that they're putting in it. What you want to do is, uh, when you do these, you notice most of these here have got two boxes. Right. That's the brood boxes. That's basically your hive right there. 
Uh, once they get those filled up with honey, then you'll start putting the supers on because you know, the bees will just keep filling and filling. Wow. Well, there you go. That's what you want right there. The hive to hive has its own personality. Hive to hive and day to day. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's like anybody, you know, sometimes you get up in a good mood, sometimes you get up in a bad <laughs> mood. I guess it's the same way with bees, you know. <laughs> but he said that a red hive, you just don't want to get around to some day, Yeah, they, they're, they're, they, uh, they don't just fly out, they roll out. I mean, when they come out, they're, oh, they're, they're now They're this packing. is now when you're making when you're doing your honey is do you start like this you leave it uh, in the wax or do you get how do you get well, it out of the wax? Actually, what we got it got a little tool they call the a decapping tool. Gotcha. And it will scrape these little white caps off here. Mm -hmm. and basically, this is is full of honey. Is and that ready for? Uh, this are you this, gonna this is that? ready. You could harvest this if, uh, wow. if all of them are full. What you do is you'll check, and once they get all of them full, uh, being the time of the year it is right now, if once they got this one full could come back and put another one on top since they filled this one up so well. You know, wow. you, can, you can leave it on there and you don't have to harvest it every time it's full. You can actually put another super on top of it if you want to. That to me is just that's, amazing. That's full of liquid gold. You could uh, check the weight on that. I mean, that's... Oh my goodness, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. That weighs a couple pounds. Yeah, that's, that's pretty heavy right there. You figure you got, you got nine of these in a box. Obviously, bees go out and pollinate anything that has pollen, mm -hmm. which to some folks, pollen really messes them up. Oh, yeah. And Kentucky is the worst place in the world to have allergies because everything in the world has pollen in it. That, if taken every day, I suppose would help with that if you have a local. I've got people that uh, actually come get honey here local. Uh, every morning when they get up, cup of coffee, tablespoon of honey. Every morning, religiously. No kidding. And, and it helps uh, them out. Oh, it helps them out, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the closer to where they are uh, from where the uh, honey come from, the better it is because that's where all the flowers that's is at. the pollen that they're dealing with. That's the pollen with that they're dealing with at home. What's it going to cost somebody to, to get started? If you bought a pre-made kit and everything, you know, if you buy everything together, you're looking at roughly 300 bucks, two to 300 it's bucks, you know. And, 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 it, and it sounds expensive, you know, which, you know, I don't have 300 bucks just to throw away. But, uh, you know, the return that you get on that once you get set up and going. You know, it is worth it to me. I want to thank you so much for talking you're with welcome. us today and sharing information with folks out there who might want to do that themselves. No, you're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Now, on the ground here, we've got something laying down here. It's a super. It's a super. It's a super. Super duper. Super duper super. Now, what's it mean when uh, you say, hey, farmer, you need to put a super on this thing? Uh, well, what they'll do is uh, once they get the hives filled up with honey, they'll keep moving up. And when you put the super on top, that's what you'll harvest. That's where, all your, uh -huh. that's where all your honey's at. And then we get to sling. Get to sling it then. And that's a whole lot of fun. Now remember, this place was right in Frankfurt. So this is the hub of the world for the beekeepers. Yeah, they ship all over the East Coast. I'll tell you what, let's take a look at this next segment. And then we're going to talk about at the end some things we're going to do with this particular hive. We're talking about splitting the hive. Got enough bees in it, believe you'd be able to split it. I like the sound of that. Now we've been talking to Jay and we've been talking to Alan about bees and guess what? I have bees. Yes, sir. I'm a do. bee dude. <laughs> yes, sir. You but do. you're like you and you and Alan like the king bee dudes. I'm just like the like the like the court jester bee dude. Yeah, hey, you starting out. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a long, complicated process. It's not something you enter into lightly. There's so much to think about, there's so much science involved, there's so much that you're gonna learn just watching your own bees. Right. As you go along, you'll develop little different things as you go along. But I was fascinated to see you come out the other day with this little box of bees. That's a nuke box. That's just a starter kit. You brought them in. You combined two hives. You sprayed them down with vanilla extracts. It covers the scent for the queen that's in the box and uh, the bees that we took out of a separate box. Otherwise, they'd be they'd be fighting, stabbing each other, yeah. and cussing, and making all kinds of noise. But they made friends. The queen's still in there. She's laying eggs. She is laying. Yes, sir. Which is what we want. Yep. Now, today, we're at a place called The Dance. Yes. In Frankfurt. Right here in Frankfurt. Yes. That has got a daggone warehouse. Everything in this warehouse is nothing but honeybees. Anything you could think of, it's here. And people come from all over the United States to this place. I didn't know it was here. A lot of people don't, That's believe it or not. Do. Oh, yes. The BB uh, Clay gets people from... Probably from Illinois all the way down to Tennessee, Georgia. You'd be surprised people come. Your boxes don't come like this. You can get them like that. Okay. You can get everything pre-assembled, frames, foundation, everything pre-assembled. But if you want to pay the extra money for it. 
It's probably a little cheaper to put it together yourself. Yes. Well, we're going with that option. And you've stepped me through the process. What did we get today? Well, we got two brood boxes. Okay. We've got a inner cover, bottoms, uh, tops, foundation, and frames. That's the start out. So my little, pretty little red, what, what's it called again? Nuke box. The nuke box. I'm a, it's a starter kit. It's a starter kit. We're yes. buying the real stuff. Yes. Once they fill the nuke box, then that's when you've got to get all the bigger stuff in to get them through the winter. Now, and that's the whole of the process. We'll talk about that later. But they have to make sure you got to. We got to make sure they've got enough to eat all through the winter. A good hive needs at least 60 pounds of honey to get them wow. through the winter. And 60 pounds is not a lot. You figure honey weighs about 11 pounds a gallon. Is wow. What it weighs. When people see these hives sitting on the side of the road, they have no idea there's that much honey in there. No, no. Uh, a box on a good time could probably weigh up to 300 pounds. That's two bottom boxes and probably three supers on top of it. Now, as the bee consumer, the guy who wants to eat the honey, at the end of the season, when you sling, and these are slingers right here, they actually sling the honey out of that, which is, we're going to do a, a very... Uh, from beginning to end series on this, and we'll show you slinging honey once you get it out of your boxes. What do you get on a good box at the end of the season? Now, last year I had uh, medium supers. That's the bigger supers. I was slinging a little over three and a half gallons per box. Now, a lot of people think they just want bees for themselves. Just for themselves, that's a whole lot of honey. Yeah. And uh, in a way, it's cheaper to buy, believe it or not. If you figure one soup, uh, one hive will produce probably about three supers. And it could be three supers in the spring and three supers in the fall. That's a good natural sweet source you can put in, yes. in everything inclu included. In fact, we'll have to take some honey. And I've got a couple of uh, Asian recipes that will go really good with that. I, believe it or not, people care with it too. Wow. Oh, we get, we'll talk about the eating later because I'm getting starving. <laughs> I am too, let's, uh, let's go in here and talk to the fella, one of the fellas who uh, will help folks if they come in here. Then we get to take this home, assemble it, get it together, and I won't be a newbie anymore. <laughs> I get out of the new box into the what? Uh, uh, brood box. Brood box. Ten frame brood box. I'm almost a full fledged bee dude. Almost. Well, we got to get you stung first for your full fledged I don't want any part <laughs> of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it through the whole year without getting stung. I got to give me a suit. Yeah. If you're not one of getting stung, the best thing not to even have bees. Well, I've been stung so many times in my life, pulled them out of my feet, went barefoot, and I never, my head never exploded, I never bled out of my eyes, so I suppose I'll probably live through it. Uh, the, the honeybee's sting's not near as bad as a wasp. The thing is, get that out of there quick because it's got a little pump in it. And, and the, the main thing is it. don't pinch it, scrape it. Scrape it. Yeah, you scrape it. Once you pinch it, you just force the rest of the venom inside that, inside your body. No pinching. Uh, driver's license, scrape it right straight off. Or credit card. Credit card, anything. Yep. Scrape it off. Don't don't squeeze it because it's going to hurt. Yes. Let's go on to the next step and let's meet the fellow that uh, runs the store here. Okay. We sure do it. All right, man. We are at the dance, which is right here in Frankfort, Kentucky. Never knew you were here. <laughs> until, I, until I was a uh, potential wannabe bee dude. And then I found out from uh, Alan and Jay that you're down here, and, and you got everything a person could want when it comes to bees. We've been here about seven years now. You know, we've got a 15,000-square-foot warehouse and showroom, as you can see. That's astounding. And we've got everything you need for beekeeping. Now, obviously, if I'm going to be messing with bees, I'm going to need one of those wacky-looking suits that you you help you keep from getting stung. They're not 100% sting proof but they they should help they do help yeah and you're going to get stung if you handle bees you're going to get stung well, which we suit have do I need to several different them? kind of suits in our stock we have full length ones we have ones just like this which we would recommend for you and you say you want them a little bigger you don't want them loose you don't want them no, tight don't want them loose you want them just a little bit big you can't really get them too big but so we'll try this one on you so i'm going to suit up now i'm going to look really cool in this right because <laughs> i'm telling you yeah. alan looks cool in his Awesome. I am your father. <laughs> well, so, you know, I, f I feel like it'd be good. obviously I wouldn't want to have shorts on this. So no. you say loose jeans or, or blue jeans? Yes, blue gotcha. jeans. Also, and if you're allergic to them or scared of bees, we've got full suits over here, and we've got just the pants. You can buy just the pants and pull those on, which I wear myself. Yeah. Because I have been stung 
31 times in the face, and I don't want to be stung at one time. At one time. I would hate it. <laughs> a that swarm happened. of bees. Now, you saw the warehouse. It's just chock full of everything you can imagine. Everything. There are bee clubs here in Frankfurt where people can, if they're just starting, they can get information from other people. And everybody has their own little way. They tweak certain things. And I guess you could come to that. How do you get in the, involved the in that? Capital City Beekeepers, we meet the fourth Tuesday of each month, not necessarily the last Tuesday, but the fourth Tuesday at 7 o'clock right here at the dance, uh, 955 Chenault Road, right here in the East uh, Industrial Complex in Frankfurt, Capital City Beekeepers Association.com. We have everything for candle making, which you use beeswax for. Because it we doesn't have, smoke. Yeah, we have everything for wine making, which you make mead out of honey, and we have everything for soap making, which you make soap out of beeswax too. So we have all that here in this warehouse as well. Thank you so much for having us out. Thank you, sir. Good Thanks for keeping me from getting stung today. Happy beekeeping. Thank you very much. All right. Now you have taken off the top of your hives, which you call the the super, uh, supers. The supers. Mm -hmm. Now, he's capping it. He's just taking that wax off the top where they've sealed it. Right. Then we're in the final stages right here. That, all that stuff that you've done all year long to get to, you know, to get to this stage, the last stage being right over here, which we'll talk about in a minute. He's capping it. He hands you the frame. You put it in this thing, which we call... The slinger. The slinger. Uh, if you don't take the cap off, what you do is you'll throw the center of it out. Gotcha. So you've got to take the capping off. And that just loosens everything up so it can roll so on out there. roll on out, yes. So at that point, when you crank this thing up and it goes on around, that honey just slings out and lays in the bottom of this. Then it goes through that filter. Yeah, that's a strainer. That's a two-stage strainer. Okay. The smallest is about 8,000, so it's the very bottom one. Gotcha. And it pulls the majority of the cappings that you left from this process. Then you go over to here and you've got cheesecloth. We run it through cheesecloth. That's the last thing we run through is the cheesecloth. And that pulls about everything. At which point she takes that and strains that through. It's about a pound and a half at each jar. Pound and a half of absolutely wonderful, beautiful, natural, sweet. You know, they've done studies on this stuff. It keeps germs from growing. It, never spoils. There's a, a tiny bit of hydrogen peroxide in there. It's the health benefits, I think they're just now starting to understand. Yeah, they're doing a lot more studies now than they used to. And they're finding that if you take a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of honey per day, they're finding for circulation, for joint pain, sore throats, allergies, anything that ails you. And that right there is how it's done. Now, it's got to be a pretty satisfying point in the game at this point where you bottle it up take it to a store or take it to some folks and do some trading? Yes, it is. Finally, the last stage after you go through all the process of maintaining the bees, mowing around the bees, there's a lot to it. Getting stung a few times? I've been stung since we took the honey so far. You haven't? No, sir. I've took uh, 17 boxes and I ain't been stung once. Did you wear your suit? Uh, yes. Good for you, because I'm going to always wear my suit. <laughs> <laughs> Did, uh, did he get stung in it? Yes, he did, right after we got through. <laughs> How many times? <laughs> Just once? Just once. Ladies arm right on the bed of the truck, wham, round right up. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I want to thank you and Alan showing us how this whole thing is done. This is really quite the procedure, and we've got a lot of response to folks who are watching the show who really enjoy you letting us into your world here. They like watching nature happen. They like watching the old-fashioned way, seeing things like this. People like it. So oh, thank you very good. much. That's good. We've got some great stuff coming up shortly. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Check out where we're going to be, where we're going, some great recipes. Also check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. If you've missed a show, you can check it out there. Also, we have plenty of recipes, and you have got us on the march to a million views, and we want to thank our viewers all over the world. But remember, until next week, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats, and Alan and Jay and the bees and the birds. Oops, we're not go there. 
To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Market and Cafe, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, and Weisenberger Mill. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. 